वेलकम बैक माई डियर बॉयस एंड गेल्स टूडे वी आर हैविंग ए रिविशन ऑन चैप्टर थ्री एंड फोर एंड एट द लास्ट यू विल बी हैविंग ए वर्कशीट और सम इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर एंड यू आर हैविंग एन आंसर की ऑफ द प्रीवियस एग्जामिनेशन विच वी कंटेक्टेड ऑन नाइनटींथ ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर फर्स्ट वी विल स्टार्ट विद चैप्टर थ्री मूवमेंट टूवर्ड्स ए न्यू वर्ल्ड as you know as you remember in the second chapter we have discussed about the first world war and the formation of league of nations continuing the same topic here as you know after first world war people felt they are facing lots of problem after the first world war people became economically poor and the government which was present in each country they were not able to improve or solve the problems of the citizen people gradually lost their trust in democracy in many countries dictatorship began democracy was removed and people started dictatorship which became a driving force for the second world war now we will analyze some of the events or important events which led to the second world war the first point is fascism in italy as you know who was the founder of fascist movement benito mussolini you remember the thing italy was uh, act, act, italy took active participation in the first world war and it was on the side of the winning nations but this after winning the countries the winning nations they never took or the major powers they never took any help or any powerful help to our uh, to italy italy felt very bad on this because they have they occurred a huge or a massive expenditure and lost a huge number of soldiers italians felt very bad on their and their nationalistic feelings were shaken in order to free italy from such a desperate situation benito mussolini established a new party in italy called the fascist party the symbol of the party was a bundle of sticks and axes the word fascism means absolute control of the state on everything the principle which the party followed was one party one leader they were having the uniform black in color the, he broke all the relations with league of nations and they joined rome berlin tokyo axis italy became one of the reason or it uh, become a responsible for the second world war one factor for second world war was italy's movement to fascism in point is nazism in germany as you know germany had lost the first world war totally it was ruined economically it was ruined the paris peace process had compelled germany to sign the treaty of versailles germans were extremely angry with this unjust treaty during that time adolf hitler he joined the national socialist german workers party this word party later came to be known as nazi party the party was having the philosophy with the nationalism and socialism after the death of the german president hitler assumed the post and established the dictatorial rule Germans towards uh, Germ he pulled the Germans with his aggressive policies and he took the German people towards narrow nationalism. According to uh, uh, Germans, Hitler was a Führer. Führer means savior. Nazi soldiers wore blue military uniform and they had a red strip on their shoulder, and they wore a symbol of swastika. Hitler's authoritarian and militaristic nature became obvious. His main aim was 
targeted at exterminating or killing the Jewish people, the gypsies and mentally challenged people. He followed the principle of Aryans, uh, German uh, Aryanism. You have heard about or we have studied about Holocaust or genocide which means lots of Jewish people, European Jewish people were killed. Hitler's expansionism, military action against neighboring countries and the policy of exterminating certain groups led to the Second World War and became an important reason for the Second World War. Third point is militarism in Japan. As you know, Germany, Japan had fought against Germany in the First World War. As per the Treaty of Versailles, Japan got the benefit of provinces of China. When Germany was divided and the portions went to England, France and America, Japan felt very bad. Japan was quite unhappy with the division of Germany. Japan was forced to agree to have only 35% of naval force. They have to vacate the islands of Sakhalin and Siberia and also not admitted as a permanent member of League of Nations. Japanese youth got angry and the party supporting militarism got the majority and hence they came to power after the uh, uh, after, uh, em, after the emperor uh, Meiji and thus militarism started in Japan. Fourth point is global depression. After the first world war came to an end, lots of problems emerged in the world like unemployment, starvation, economic downfall broken political system and so on. The heads of most of the European nations believed that these problems would come to end as very soon but their beliefs were mistaken. Suddenly people started selling large number of their share in the Wall Street stock market of America which shook the stock market heavily. This event is known as Wall Street crisis of 24th October 1929. This crisis gave birth to the Great Global Depression of 1929 to 1932. We will be see, going to see about the World War, Second World War. As you know, the Treaty of Versailles actually this was one of the main reason for the Second World War. The Paris peace process had displeased many nations. This was one of the main reason for the Second World War. Now we will analyze one by one the causes of the Second World War. This is a very important topic as I told you. It can come as an answer for 5 mark or 4 mark. What were the reasons for the Second uh, World War? First one is fierce nationalism. Fierce nationalism developed in countries like Germany, Japan, Italy. Germans could never forget and overcome the Treaty of Versailles. Hitler started capturing some provinces of Australia and Czechoslovakia. And thus, see Mussolini, he started fierce nationalism and adopted imperialism. Japan was also imperialistic. Thus, the world peace came into a danger. Second point, groupism. Many countries started groups or started forming groups with other countries. For example, Italy signed a treaty with Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, Romania, Hungary, Greece, Turkey and Australia. Same way, Russia also signed a treaty with Germany, Turkey, Lithuania and Iran. You will see about the Rome, Berlin, Tokyo Axis group which is supported with the support of Germany and Japan with Italy. Same way you will see many treaties, many alliances start. This is called a groupism. Third one is militarism. On one side, efforts were being made to maintain peace after the First World War. On the other side, European nations are come, uh, collecting 
weapons. The production of more and more weapons increased in all European countries. At the same time, Russia and Germany began compulsory military training to the citizen. Same way, Japan increased its military force. And finally, people understood that the world is moving to an another world war. Fourth point is failure of League of Nations. After the first world war, you know, League of Nations, they were not able to solve the problem. Especially, uh, Italy, Japan, they moved out because of Italy had captured Abyssinia. Japan attacked the Manchuria. Germany snatched away the provinces of Czechoslovakia. In such situation, League of Nations could do nothing. The greed for power among several nations became stronger in the League of Nations. It could not stop groupism and this was the biggest failure of the League of Nations. Next point is Treaty of Versailles. As I told you, the Treaty of Versailles itself was a reason for the next world war. Hitler called this treaty as the treaty as a piece of paper and he rejected it. Sixth point is imperialistic ab ambition of Adolf Hitler. Hitler laid the foundation of the second world war as you know. He had a fierce nationalistic and militaristic nature. His first victim of imperialism was Austria. Along with Germany, he entered Austria on 12th March 1938 and the next day of the Munich Convention, Germany captured Czechoslovakia. Thus, the next imperial, this imperialistic policy of Hitler was the main cause of the Second World War. Moving to the last and the seventh point, German attack on Poland. This all the different reason. At the same time, a small spark was enough to start the war. In such a situation, Hitler, under the leadership of German army, attacked peaceful Poland. Poland was the neighboring country. They were, they were having no any problem, nothing, no problems with Germany. And the German attacked Poland on uh, September 1st, 1939. Thus, Second World War started. Germany, uh, Britain and France warned Germany to stop the war. But igno uh, Germany ignored and Berlin and Fla France plunged into the war and thus the Second World War started. We can consider or we can say that the immediate cause of the Second World War was Germans attack on Poland. Now moving to Second World War. Here we are as you know. During the first world war also the world was divided into two groups. Same way in the second world war also two groups were formed. Allied nations and Axis nation. Allied nations under the leadership of England and France. Axis nation comprising of Germany, Italy and Japan. America was a neutral country. But when America's navy... American Navy was attacked at Pearl Harbor by Japan. America joined the side of Allied Nations and they started fighting against Japan. Thus, Allied Nations became more powerful. To stop Japan from war, America dropped atom bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki on uh, 11th, uh, sorry, 6th August. 1945. By 11th August 1945, Japan surrendered and the Second World War came to an end. Now the effects of the Second World War. Here you can consider the effects of Second World War into two. That is effects, long term effect and immediate effects. The immediate effect was the economic effect and the communism in China. You know, in economic effects, you know, this war caused a terrible destruction all over the world. Not only allied nation and Axis, but all the countries were facing, those who took part in the war, they all faced lots of destruction. The economic life of the people was shattered. As a result, the nation of the world was pushed into an economic depression. Second 
immediate effect was communism in China. Many nations of the world were impressed by the way Russia had made a fast progress with its communist measures. So China too joined communism under the leadership of Mao Tse Tang in 1949. The long term effect of the second world war was the beginning of the cold war. As you know after second world war the world was divided into two superpowers America and Russia. Even though Russia and America was under one banner in the second world war after the war they separated. They were very good friends in the first world war. But because of the differences in opinion between them they separated. America a democratic country and Russia communist country. So they separated each other. The countries those who supported democracy joined the side of America and the countries those who supported communism joined the side of Russia. The war of words and the war of ideologies that both superpowers incurred in order to support or oppose each other's opinion created the atmosphere of Cold War. Another short note, important question, short uh, Cold War. After that, you will see uh, the formation of United Nations. This is also a long term effect of uh, Second World War, United Nations. United Nations was formed in order to establish world peace. The main aim of United Nations was establishment of world peace. You know, after First World War, the League of Nations was a failure. But by the end of the Second World War, that is on 24th October 1945, United Nations was established with the main purpose, peace, security and coexistence in the world. And their headquarters is in New York. America's President Roosevelt had important uh, place in this formation of United Nations. Now come another pro point is Atlantic Agreement. What do you mean by Atlantic Agreement? American President Roosevelt and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, they prepared an eight point agreement in a ship in the Atlantic Ocean which came to be known as Atlantic Agreement. The main matters which they were discussing was maintaining of freedom and sovereignty of every nation peace, security, social and economic welfare and disarmament. Now next topic is Moscow declaration. What do you mean by Moscow Dis Dis declaration? The foreign ministers of Britain, America, Russia and China met in Moscow for world peace which came to be known as Moscow declaration. Now come to the formation of United Nations. On uh, 24th October 1945, 51 member nations, they gave their support, the representatives of 51 member nations, they declared their support and established a new organization called United Nations Organization or UNO. That is why every year 24th October is celebrated as United Nations Day. At present, we are having 193 nations as the main supporters of United Nations. As we have detailed study on the organs of United Nations. United Nations is an, a very big organization which includes six other organs. The main organs of United Nations are General Assembly, Security Council, Economic and Social Council, Trusteeship Council, International Court of Justice and Secretariat. International Court of Justice is situated in Hague in Netherlands. Rest all the other councils are situated in New York in America. Now we will discuss what are the activities of each and every organ of United Nations. First one is General Assembly. This is the biggest organ of United Nations. It has the representatives of all member nations. 
every nation can send maximum five representatives but one country is having one vote they will be discussing they will be advising suggesting recommending any matters related to international relations it accepts the budget presented by the secretary general every year and allocates the expenses they will find solutions to the economic problems of the nations human rights disarmament other international matters second body is the security council this is the most important organ of united nations as you know united nations is having five permanent members that is america britain france russia and china they are the permanent members other 10 countries are non permanent members they will be elected for a term of 2 years by the general assembly they solve the problems and disputes of the nation peacefully through negotiations and mediators have you heard about the veto power when any one permanent member does not vote when there is a problem comes between two nations that problems will be solved in uh, through peaceful negotiations and mediate, mediators when any one permanent member does not vote in support of some important international matter this power is called uh, this power is rested in the hands of the five permanent members only and this power is called the veto power or the right to deny russia was the country which has used veto power maximum number of times they have used they helped us uh, in india's relation with pakistan they have used their veto power in supporting india with their power, problem with pakistan now third organ of united nation is the economic and social council this is also known as ecosoc the general assembly appoints uh, its retiring member for 3 years this council tries to raise the standard of living of nations of the world without any bias of the religion caste region etc this council is having some sub councils all over the world for example first sub council is world health organization or who it looks after the matters of the health of the people all over the world another one is imf international monetary fund which works to establish financial stability in the country world third one is food and agricultural organization fao it helps to improve agricultural production forestry and fisheries and raise the nutrition level of the country world fourth one is international labor organization ilo which works to provide rights and justice to laborers of the world unicef United Nations International Children's Fund this is the new abbreviation it take care of the child welfare activities and to improve the health of the children of the world by providing nutritional food and education last one is unesco united nations educational scientific and cultural organization which works to improve the cooperation between nations by removing illiteracy raising the standard of living of the people through education providing justice education science and cultural relations iske alawa besides this we are having other sub councils and regional councils which undertake various activities now come to the fourth organ of united nations is trusteeship council there are five permanent member nations in this council the representatives select the general assembly by the general assembly are included here its overseas matters pertaining to nations that have not acquired independence and are under some previous mandate also nations defeated in the second world war as well as its social economic political development now come to the fifth organ of united nation that is the international court of justice it is situated in the city of hague in netherlands this is the highest court in the world there are 15 judges in it they are appointed for a period of 9 years they solve the disputes between nations verdict uh, gives verdict or international disputes presented before it and gives legal advices from india we were having the first women uh, judge appointed in the international court of justice was neeru chanda she was the first woman 
Indian women appointed. And the sixth and the final organ of United Nation is the Secretariat. This is the office of the Secretary General. The Secret Assembly, General Assembly appoints the Secretary General for a period of five years. Secretaries, administrators, ad assistants, translators, experts are also appointed to help the Secretary General. His office is situated in New York. United Nations is constantly being efforts to establish world peace, world unity and to achieve the dream of universal brotherhood. I hope you understood this. You get again you rewinded your old memories about this chapter. Now we will go to the next chapter. Moving to chapter 4, National Movements in India. Here we are having some main points which you will remember. First about the division of Bengal, Sadeshi movement, formation of Muslim League, uh, revolutionary activities in India, abroad as well as in Gujarat, then non-cooperation movement and uh, Swarajya party. These are the main points which we are going to discuss in this chapter. Let us start the chapter. The great uprising of 19, 1857, as you know, Britishers, they started ruling the country for a long time. Now, after the revolt of 1857 or the first war of independence, we have seen that Britishers now started uh, their actions more strongly in our country. The great national uprising of 1857 or the first war of independence, there we are having many great heroes like Mangal Pandey. Then Nana Sahib, Tantya Topi, Raja Kuwar Singh, Rani Lakshmi Bhai, Bahadur Shah Safar etc. They all helped Indians to unite under one banner. But British crown was very successful in controlling them. And thus again we went back into the control of Britishers. Now Britishers, they stopped the East India Company. And they now they started under the rule of direct rule, rule of Queen Elizabeth or under the direct rule of the British crown. And that time the ruler of England was Queen Victoria. I hope you remember the boycott and indigenous movements at different place of India. They started different movements like Bang Bang movement of 1905 and all. Britishers started their policy of divide and rule and they wanted to create problems inside the country. They wanted to fight the Hindus and the Muslims with each other. As a primary step, they divided the Bengal province into two, East Bengal and West Bengal. During that time, the Viceroy or the representative of Queen Victoria was Viceroy Curzon in the year 1899. He came to India and he divided West Bengal into two, East Bengal and West Bengal. The day when Bengal was divided, that is 16th October 1905, the whole Bengal observed the day as National Morning Day. They started boycotting all foreign goods and encouragement to use Deshi items, Swadeshi items. They started boycotting foreign goods, adopted national education, adopted indigenous products, that is Swadeshi movement. Because of Swadeshi movement, the Britishers lost their market in India. And in the year, that is after six years, Britishers understood that if this is continuing like this way, their market will lost totally in India. And they cancelled the division of Bengal. In the year 1911, this was a noteworthy victory of the new awakening against the British rule. Now, a new party for British uh, Muslims are coming in our country or establishing in our country that is Muslim League. This was also the policy adopted by the Britishers, adopting of the divide and rule policy of the Britishers. Britishers wanted to create a conflict between the Hindus and the Muslims in India. That time the Viceroy was Lord Mindo and Indian Divan or Indian Wazir was Morley. They togetherly planned to crush the Indians nationalistic feelings. So 
with the help of the religious head of Muslims, Aga Khan, and the Nawab of Dhaka, and the Viceroy Mindo and his personal minister Dunlop Smith. They played an important role in establishing of a new party for the Muslims. So, thus, a small group of Muslims started joining Muslim League, the new party which was formed. See, we will see at many places, the real creator of Pakistan was Muhammad Ali Jinnah. But, as a historian, we should say that Lord Minto was the father of Muslim communalism in India or the real creator of Pakistan was not Muhammad Ali Jinnah or Rehumut Allah but Lord Minto was the real man who created the idea of creating a separate nation for the Muslims that is Lord Minto. Moving to the revolutionary movements, extreme revolutionary movements. As you know, the revolutionary movement in India was started by Vasudev Balwan Farki. He was having lots of ideas. He was also supported by Damodara Chapankar, Balakrishna Chapatkar brothers, Veer Savkar, Badridhanath Khosh, Kudridham Bosch. It's a bohat sara unko help karne ke liye aya tha. Fierce revolutionary movement began in India and spread in other countries as well. You remember the problem after the when the cancellation of Bengal was occurred and the problem started inside the Congress party. In the year 1907, the Congress was having their conference in Surat. During that time, two groups that is Jahals and Mawals. So inside the Congress, two groups was run. Jahals means radicals and Mawals means moderates. Some people, they were supporting the revolutionary movement and some were against that. The one who was against the, the those who were supporting the revolutionary movement was Jahals or the radicals and some were against they were telling that we should not fight against like this type of cruel way they were called the moderates or the Mawals. Have you heard about the Lal Bal Pal trio? Yes. Lal means Lala Lajpat Rai, Bal means Balagangadra Tilak and Pal Bibin Chandra Pal. They adopted the radical attitude which brought new life into the young Indian activist. Actually the young Indians, they were not ready for a moderate work. They, were, they wanted the freedom of the country through revolutionary method. Have you heard about Lokamani Tilak and his famous quotation, Freedom is my birthright and I will achieve it anyhow. At that time, a group of Indian youth undertook activities to seek freedom from foreign rule. These extreme revolutionary movements, they wanted to sacrifice their, they were ready to sacrifice with happiness, they sacrificed their life for the motherland. See, at many parts of our country, revolutionarism started. Maharashtra, Bengal, Punjab, Bihar, Gujarat, Odisha, Rajasthan, Madras province, UP, and central India, everywhere you will find this type of movement was started. See, this movement, the extreme revolutionary movement, we are dividing it into two. That is in the first stage and the second stage. In the first stage, you will see newspapers and magazines. Uh, Kesari, Maratha, Navashakti, Yugantar, like this type of uh, newspapers were published. And they were distributed among peoples. Some revolutionaries were arrested in Haura Massacre and Dhaka Massacre where they tried to kill Lord Harding by throwing a bomb or when uh, Viceroy Mindo was his uh, travelling uh, journey in uh, Raipur Darwaja in Ahmedabad, they dropped a bomb to kill him but nothing happened to them. But in the second phase that is about 1920 to 1942, See, more serious events took place. For example, Kakori, loot case, Lahore massacre, dropping of bomb on the central parliament, Delhi, this all. During this time, our great ruler, um, revolutionary leader, Bhagat Singh, he dropped the bomb, uh, dropping of bomb on central parliament under the leadership of Bhagat Singh. It happened on 8th April 1929. And he was arrested. He was, his voluntary surrendered and he was arrested on 12th June 1929 and he was hanged to death by the Britishers. 
after that you will see the revolutionary movements in gujarat while you are writing about the extreme revolutionary movements the three points you are supposed to say first of all revolutionary activity in india then revolutionary movement in other states revolutionary movement in gujarat and revolutionary movement in foreign countries this is the extra uh, answer these are the points you should include when you are writing about extreme revolutionary movements now come to the extreme revolutionary movement in gujarat under the leadership of sri arbindo ghosh revolutionary movement in gujarat started but he was always behind the curtain his brother barindra kumar ghosh he took the leadership he arrived in gujarat and he started he were have he was having connection with many people they had they conducted meetings at different places and they were uh, conducted meeting and they had distributed pamphlets they took revolutionary movement at different places it was also the, the one of the revolutionary movement which they had done how to how they spread the revolutionary ideas see they wrote things in gujarati and published in journals for, uh, for example books their titles will be in gujarati for example deshi vanaspati davao nahavanu sabu banavani tarik kes kasrat gulab no kiso aisa aisa gujarati headings ke andar they have written the andar जो भी है वो बॉम्ब कैसे बनाता है वॉट आर द डिफरेंट रेवल्यूशनरी मूवमेंट दे शुड फॉलो सो एंड सो मेनी गुजराती यूथ जॉइंट दिस रेवल्यूशनरी एक्टिविटीज एंड गवर्नमेंट वॉज ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट वॉज सपोज टू टेक स्ट्रिक्ट एक्शन अगेंस्ट दिस पीपल नाउ कम टू द लास्ट पॉइंट ऑफ रेवल्यूशनरी मूवमेंट दैट इज रेवल्यूशनरी मूवमेंट इन फॉरन कंट्रीज एस यू नो पीपल मेनी इंडियंस दो आर लिविंग एट अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड लाइक इन डिफरेंट कंट्रीज they started helping indians through their uh, with the uh, from that country they used to help for example shyam shyam ji krishna varma madan lal dingre veer savkar lala hardeyal they all many many people they helped in uh, spreading revolutionary movement in foreign countries so next topic is moral and indo reforms as we have discussed earlier it is was part of the divide and rule policy of the britishers now arrival of gandhi ji next important topic is arrival of gandhi ji to india see here the final phase of india's freedom struggle starting with the arrival of gandhi ji after completely successfully finishing finishing his work in south africa against the britishers gandhi ji came to india his political guru was gopalakrishna gokhale and spiritual mentor was shrimad ram rajachandra he got inspiration from all these people and he started traveling from one part of india to other he understood the problems of the indians according to him the root cause of india's poverty is the exploitation and uh, made plans to abolish british rule in india first point is rowlatt act the british government formed the rowlatt act under the chairmanship of mr rowlatt he was the minister of law in 1990 as per his suggestion they framed the law with the purpose of suppressing revolutionaries and nationalists so whenever a person or a group of people is uh, uh, conducting they, they will be arrested and put into jail without conducting any trial against them so gandhi ji called this act black act motilal nehru considered it as a snatching away of argument appeal and advocacy with this rule british government got immense power and they started arresting people at different parts of the country the famous incident jallian wala bag mazakar of 13 march 1919 you have heard about you have studied a lot about this see during that time in punjab the famous or their favorite their popular leader like Dr Satyapal and Dr Kichlu they were arrested in Amritsar because of uh, under the pretext of black act or rowlatt act it was on the day of baisakhi the national festival of uh, 
Punjab. People assembled in a garden called Jallianwala. During that time, British uh, General O'Donnell, O'Donnell Dyer, he came there with his troops and without any warning, he opened fire on innocent people with using his machine gun. Lots of people died because the four sides of the garden was having huge walls and only one exit at the center there was a pond and lots of people died in it. And many people got injured also. British government appointed a commission called the Hunter Commission. According to this, the Hunter Commission investigating the case on the behalf of British government, Defence General Dyer. According to them, it was an innocent mistake that happened unknowingly. And finally, Dyer returned to England. When he reached England, he was honoured with a sword and 2,000 pounds. This made Indians terribly shocked. Gandhiji too was shocked. According to this, see, Gandhiji lost his faith in the Britishers. And thus they started the foundation stone for the new movement called the Non-Cooperation Movement. Now come to Khilafat movement. Khilafat movement, it was a movement started to support the Muslims. As the head of the world Muslims was the head of, head was the Sultan of Turkey. To support them, uh, that movement in India, uh, uh, the, uh, the Khilafat movement, Ali brothers, Maulana Shaukat Ali and Maulana Muhammad Ali, they were the chief leaders of this movement. Gandhiji requested the Congress to support this movement, keeping Hindu-Muslim unity in mind. With the, uh, the movement became severe with the Congress support. Now, moving to the main important topic, non-cooperation movement. Non-cooperation movement, it was decided in the Nagpur conference. The Congress made a strong demand for independence of India, that is Swarajya. This movement is having some effects. This effects we are dividing it into two that is positive aspect and negative aspect. Positive aspect is also known as constructive aspect. What was the positive side of non-cooperation movement? The positive aspect of this movement was the Hindu-Muslim unity was strengthened. Examples of using Swadeshi articles, revival of spinning wheel in every house, collection of 1 crore rupees for Tilak Swarajya Fund, abolition of untouchability, national education, prohibition, etc. started. At the same time, this movement was having a negative effect also. The effect, negative aspect was, people started giving up their government jobs, government schools, colleges, boycotted legislatures, resigned from government courts, local self-government, foreign boycotting foreign clothes and other articles government functions, government titles, etc. What were the different programs of the non-cooperation movement? What were the different programs of the non-cooperation movements? In the beginning, Ravindranath Tagore and uh, Ravindra, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, they have surrendered their, uh, they have surrendered their titles given by the Britishers. For example, uh, Ravindranath Tagore, uh, he got knighthood honor when uh, he got the um, when he got the Nobel Prize. Same way, Kesari Hind was the title given to Mahatma Gandhi. They all returned this. Like, like that, many other leaders they have surrendered. Students left English schools and colleges at very places, many places. Foreign clothes was set on fire. When Duke of Kainath, he was the Prince of Wales, uh, Duke of Kainath and the Prince of Wales, when they came to India, people boycotted these functions. This type of incident created a considerable national excitement. At the same time, national schools and colleges were established. Indian schools and colleges were established. Like Kashi, Bihar, Jamia Mila, Gujarat Vidya Bid, etc. Same way vigorous propagandas for Sodeshi goods, import of cloth, footwear, luxurious items from England reduced drastically. This reaction rattled the British Parliament. They were shook by the movement because it 
they got a huge loss in the British uh, Empire uh, Parliament. Now, on uh, uh, many occasions, like Hindu Muslim emerged from predominant. For example, the Mopla revolt took place in Malabar, that is in Kerala. The Hindu landlords and the Muslim peasants they started fighting each other. It was suppressed by the British army. Government adopted a lots of policy of suppression. They started uncontrolled lati charge, firing, collective arrest, inhuman torturing. But unsuccessful attempts to break Hindu Muslim unity was made by the Britishers. Now the third point, another point is Chori Chora incident. As you know, a lot uh, group of people they were conducting a peaceful rally in Chori Chora village in Gorakhpur in UP. The police opened a fire on the people. The people got angry and they attacked the police station and set on fire. And in that fire, 21 police were died. Hearing this, Gandhiji felt very bad and he said, I have committed a Himalayan blunder by giving the tool of Satyagraha into the hands of the people who do not understand the value of non-violence. And thus, the movement that is non-cooperation movement was cancelled. So, what was the reason for the cancelling of non-cooperation movement or withdrawal of non-cooperation movement because of Chorichara incidents? At the same time, we are having lots of effects, positive effects or importance of non-cooperation movement. People started giving national education, Hindi stressed getting more importance than English. A strong feeling of nationalism evolved. That was the main thing. Now, a new party was started by under the leadership of Chittaran Jandas and Motilal Nehru. They formed a new party called the Swarajya Party when the non-cooperation movement was withdrawn. In the first election, they got majority, but with the death of Chittaran Jandas in 1920s, five, Swadeshi Party, Swarajya Party became weak, and uh, the members, those who started supporting the government, were uh, uh, some started supporting the Britishers and some formed a new party called the National Party. And finally, the party, the prestige of the party is reduced. And uh, the next election, except in Madras province, the party lost all the places. And thus, we come to the end of this fourth chapter also. Now, I am having a small worksheet for you. I want you to do this worksheet into your notebook. Just copy down it so that you will study it. Aaj aapko time nahi mil rahe. Aap ye unit test ke baad, aapka periodic test ke baad. Pakka ye questions aapka aapka notebook mein likhna hai. Because this will help you in the coming examinations. Now moving to the worksheet, we are having answer in one word. Total 15 questions I have made from both the chapters, chapter 3 and 4. Please write the question and write the answers. Second question is answer the following question. Here you are having some 6 questions. This small short answers for 2 or 3 mark questions. Question 3, write short notes. This is an important questions which I found, repeated questions we are getting every year. 10 short notes I have picked up for you. You should write it into your notebook and complete it. Question 4, answer in detail. That is, we are having 4 questions. Please write this detail answer. That is, you can expect this questions for 4 mark. Only 4 questions I am having. Write it into your notebook. Now, here I am having the answer key of the test of chapter 10, organs of government, which we have done on Saturday 19th September. So please go through the answers here and correct the answers in your notebook wherever corrections are required. So we will uh, long answers I have not mentioned section 1, section 2 and section 3 I have discussed here ex written here. Rest the questions we have written in the notebook. So complete your notebook by checking that with your that with your notebook and complete the notebook. So, this questions will be under the separate revision test chapter 10 karke aapko likke mujhe submit karna padega when we are coming after your Diwali exam, uh, assign, uh, vacation to school. So, this all things are having internal marks. Complete the notebooks, 
see you in the next class and tomorrow we are having a self evaluation test today we have discussed chapter 3 and 4 and chapter 10 we have completed in saturday and chapter 15 already we have discussed so tomorrow that is on wednesday you will be having a self evaluation test for a mark of 25 maximum mark 25 and your time limit will be 45 minutes so please get ready prepare for that this is part of our revision till then stay safe thank you